what's up, y'all? Coming to you today from the podcast studio. Going to talk about what's been going on here in my Florida lawn. As you know, in the summer, we have, in a lot of counties here in Florida, we have nitrogen and phosphorus bands or blackouts where you can't apply those nutrients during the summer months. This is also the rainy season. So what happens is all during the rainy season is basically your soil just gets washed out of nutrient completely. We had a hurricane. That didn't help. And so the thing I want to talk about first when we're talking about what I've been doing and why and the results I've been getting is I have been back to fertilizing regularly, really pushing my St. Augustine and my zoysia grass. I want you to think about this time of year. The lawn's coming off that rain drunk period. We're going to talk about watering in a minute. Uh, I have brown spots everywhere, which you could think were disease. You could think this is uh, this is insects, which I've dug and don't find insects. And what I've come to realize these areas are, it's just areas where all during the summer water just washes constantly. Because as you guys know, it rains here every single day in the afternoon. And then again, you get a hurricane where you have saturated lawn for over a week. And what that does is it stresses the grass out. Wet feet will actually kill a lawn or send a lawn into dormancy the same way that not enough water will. It's just extremes don't work. And so the way you get these spots to recover is when things dry up like we have now. And now I know we have a trop storm coming. We can talk about that later. But for the most part, we've been fairly dry right now. And when that happens, things are going to change. The days are getting shorter. What you have, uh, also a little bit of cooler temperatures, is you have a natural growth regulator in your lawn, which means now you can hammer it with nitrogen all you want, and you're not going to push too much growth. On top of that, this is how you're going to get your lawn to grow out from the brown spots that came from too much water or disease damage or insect damage all summer. You can also see that spot right there where the sidewalk ends. By the way, people always ask me, why does the sidewalk end and not go through your lawn? Well, the answer is I didn't have this house built, but apparently someone knew that one day I was going to live here and I would rather have grass than sidewalks, so they... They did that for me ahead of time, but but that spot right there, it checks out almost every single year because water just sits there. And you can see, I just fertilized the heck out of it once I was able to, and now it's back to normal and looking great. So you can see that area is right there. So I'll show you what it looked like a month ago. And now you can see what it looks like now. All I did was just hammer it with a lot of fertilizer and it just grows itself right back out. Now, here are some lawns in my neighborhood that were not hit with nitrogen. They haven't been fertilized, and you can see they're still struggling. And the key there is don't make that mistake. A lot of you guys come back down here, you're snowbirds, you're coming back down, and you think, well, up north in New York or Illinois, where I came from, the season is over. I'm going to go to Florida. I'm going to sit on the beach. But really, what you need to be doing is getting back in the lawn because this is a prime time season. Now, things are a little different if you're, say, up north in Jacksonville, versus down south in Miami-Dade or where I'm out on the west coast over here in Bradenton. So I have a guide that I'll give you. Uh, you can I'll link it in the description. It's just a Florida winter lawn care guide. We talk about the frost line and some of the different philosophy or strategy you can take or approach depending how far north or south you are in Florida. But the key is you need to keep fertilizing. As long as you're still mowing, you should be throwing. Let's take advantage of the slower growth. We're not going dormant. Again, got to got to understand that frost line there, but we're not going to go dormant, so we're going to hammer that lawn. And what that will do is allow it to recover. Now, how does it recover? What makes the grass, especially St. Augustine grass and zoysia and Bermuda as well, and Baha'i grass to an extent, I don't think we have a lot of centipede here, but you guys get what I'm saying. What makes our grasses so awesome is this. So first and foremost, the point here when it comes to Florida lawns is to realize these Sylvester Stolons are strong and they will take ground. This is why those areas feed in. Look at that. Look at those creepers. Huh? Those are runners that run all through there, all around in there, pushing up more green grass, making more growth. And that is why this grass recovers. So when you have a problem, something looks bad, you just push it, you just feed that growth, you fuel that growth so it recovers all on its own. That's why it's called a self-healing or a self-repairing grass because look at that, it's beautiful. So the idea is things are gonna be slower right now but you can still push those stolons to continue to move, to continue to grow, to continue to produce. So as old stuff sloughs off and dies, there is new stuff that is in there and replacing it. And the lawn will slow down overall even Further south, the lawn is really going to slow down when you get to January, but the idea is to keep it pumped up and keep it growing so you can keep mowing and that lawn can stay green and it can help to fill in any thin spots that did come up during the summer. Now, another thing to think about in Florida, especially heading into winter, is watering. We all like the cooler, drier air this time of year. It's why everybody comes down here to overwinter. And the lawns, they like it too. 
especially coming out of the rainy season where they're like oversaturated and rain drunk. However, we don't wanna take them to the other extreme and let them get too dried out either. Dry soil is just as bad as oversaturated drenched soil. And in the winter, it's up to us homeowners to regulate the soil moisture because this is definitely the dry season. We're not gonna be getting too much rain help during winter at all. The other thing to consider is, depending how far south you are in the state, your lawn may not go dormant at all. I'm in Bradenton, just south of Tampa Bay, and in most years, my zoysia and my St. Augustine grass stay green all the way through, even though we do get the occasional overnight frost here and there. Since the lawn is not gonna go dormant, it means I'm gonna need to keep it watered regularly, and, and watering regularly and keeping some moisture in the soil will also help keep it from going dormant if you do get too many of those cold days in a row. Now, the way you water is what we call deep and infrequent. It's like any relationship. It's great to run deep and wet, but there are also times when you need to give things a rest and, you know, let things dry out a little bit. Soils are very much the same way. Watering deep and infrequent means letting your irrigation run about every third day and putting down a half inch of water in each zone when you do. You'll be happy to know that in the world of lawns and soils, one half inch is considered deep and going deep every third day is a good place to start. Some lawns, they may want it a little bit more and others may get along just fine on less depending on how much shade and sun you get and other factors, but each relationship is for sure different and you have to work that out for yourself. If you've not taken the tuna can challenge yet, I'll link a video for you in the description, as well as some additional Florida winter lawn care resources to help you keep mowing and growing your Florida lawn all winter long. Now, the third thing we wanna think about in Florida this time of year are pre-emergent herbicides. A pre-emergent herbicide is a, a product you're gonna put down prior to weeds coming into the lawn and it stops them or it prevents them. This is opposed to what's called a post-emergent herbicide, which is you see the weed, you spray it, you kill it. After it's emerged, you spray it, post-emergent. We want a pre-emergent, we wanna get that down ahead of time. Now, think of that like as a defensive strategy. Pre-emergent herbicides that prevent weeds, that's a defensive strategy. And with that, in Florida, we're pretty much year round. You always wanna have some sort of pre-emergent strategy on board or on deck or ready to go at all times of the year because we don't go dormant. And so this time of year, I'm looking at bittercress, I'm looking at spurge, even signal grass, which is usually a summer annual, but where I live, it's it's seeding and, and going year round. So uh, prodiamine is actually recommended by University of Florida as a preventative for signal grass as well. So I'm actually putting prodiamine down now uh, and I'm using the WG, the, the wettable granule here. And I'll show you how to mix that up and how that works. With this application, it's 5.2 grams of the concentrate per gallon of water. One gallon of water is gonna cover 1,000 square feet. I mixed up four gallons in my four gallon backpack sprayer and that will cover 4,000 square feet of my front yard. Because I'm using the backpack and this does need to be watered in, I also have now the ability to spike in some liquid aeration to go along with it. The reason I can do that is both of these products need to be watered in. The pre-emergent must be watered in with a half inch of water or rain very quickly because it won't activate until it gets into the soil. And since the aerate, the liquid aerate, is going to help things penetrate anyway, and it also wants to be in the soil, these are really good tank mix products to go together. And that's one of the advantages to using a backpack sprayer is you can do these tank mixes so you get two applications done with just walking the lawn one time. Now this rate that I'm using is gonna give me about three months of pre-emergence protection. I'm also gonna do some more pre-emergence though coming up towards December in the shape of a weed and feed. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel here and I'll do that video coming up here in a couple, two, three weeks. If you do have any questions, I know this video has been a little bit longer, but let's start a discussion in the description below. I'd be happy to help you out. And again, I'll give you a lot more resources in the description that'll help you with your Florida lawn or your South Texas lawn and, or South Louisiana lawn or South Mississippi lawn or South Alabama lawn, wherever else you guys are growing, St. Augustine and Zoysia and all these other grass types that I don't mention enough and that somebody's going to call me out on. So uh, it's true. I love my St. Augustine. It's always just a close second. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the lawn.